Hello everyone welcome back to Easter Notes the place to the perfect science lessons and in today's video i am here with a wonderful chapter motion and time basically what we are going to cover in this chapter is right over here now when we look at an object it can be in two states it can either be moving or it can be at rest so rest and motion the types of motion first is a random motion now you might have seen a butterfly moving along it doesn't move in a straight line or in a simple curved path it will completely be in a random motion so moving in a no specific path is random motion then we have the translational motion motion in which all points of a moving body move uniformly in the same direction or line and i don't mean that it has to go straight only it can be curved but the major point in translation motion is that all the entire body has to move so it's not like i'm sitting and i'm moving my hand alone no that is not an example of translational motion my whole body has to move that to in a path now that can be straight or curved so the three types of translational motion are rectilinear motion motion in a straight line so this is the translational motion along a straight line rectilinear motion example is car moving on a straight road then we have the curvilinear motion motion in a curved path translational motion only entire body should move in a curved path curvilinear motion for example car moving on a curved road then we have a circular motion motion in circular path again it's the entire body should move of course this all are three paths of translational motion so entire body should move example motion of the earth around the sun now here the motion of the earth we are not considering the rotation we are considering the revolution then we come to the rotational motion so rotational motion is motion in a circular path about a fixed axis you must have seen a fan it is rotating at one place only and the whole body is moving but it is moving at different speed so the example of rotational motion is fan or a fidget spinner then the oscillatory motion now in this chapter we are going to focus the most on oscillatory motion because the previous motions we have learnt in class 6 oscillatory motion is the to and fro motion about the mean position the mean position is the center point and the example of oscillatory motion is a swing or a pendulum let's continue now if the word motion comes in then we also have the speed what is the speed the speed of the motion at how fast or slow the object is moving in a particular motion the speed is the distance covered by an object in a unit time in some amount of time the distance you cover is your speed so when we say that a car is moving with the speed of 5 kilometers per hour it implies that the car will cover a distance of 5 kilometers in 1 hour now another fact we have is that if the speed of an object moving along a straight line is changing its motion is said to be non uniform so i am moving first at 10 km per hour then i start going at 20 km per hour then i reduce the car speed to 5 km per hour that is non uniform motion but if it is moving in 20 km per hour constantly that is a uniform motion now coming to the triangle at the bottom right of the screen this will help you calculate the distance if the speed and time is given it will help you calculate the speed if the distance and time is given and the same thing for the time so first if i want to find the speed of an object i will cover it the speed i will cover with my hand or with a square box over here so it is implying that the speed is distance by time now the sleeping line is you have to take as a division symbol the standing line you have to take as a multiplication symbol so if i ask you the speed you will be if you have the distance you have the time you can find the speed distance by time is equal to speed then if i have to find the distance then speed and time should be given so speed into time is equal to the distance and if i need to find the time it is distance divided by speed so this small triangle over here encloses all these three formulas you don't need to memorize then again if we come to the conversion of kilometer per hour to meter per second now we have two units in speed kilometer per hour and the meter per second so if you have to convert kilometer per hour to meter per second all you have to do is multiply it by 5 by 18 so if i have to convert 5 kilometers per hour into meter per second i will multiply 5 by 18 and if you have to convert meter per second to kilometers per hour you have to divide by 5 by 18 let's move on to the next slide 
then we have the time how the time was invented first you know the our ancestors noticed that many events in nature repeated themselves after regular intervals of time now the examples are time between one sunrise and the next it happens in 24 hours right it is called a day then month was measured from one new moon to the next new moon the year is fixed as the time taken by the earth to complete one revolution of the sun Now let's come to the oscillatory motion the pendulum First let's look at the structure of the pendulum the pendulum consists of a small metallic ball or a piece of stone and this mass is suspended by a thread from a stand the metallic ball is called the bob of the pendulum it can be a metallic ball you can even tie anything you can tie your eraser you can tie a piece of thermocol doesn't matter so that mass is called the bob of the pendulum then the to and fro motion of a simple pendulum is a perfect example of a periodic and an oscillatory motion the pendulum is said to have completed one oscillation when the mass or the bob starts from its mean position o over here in the diagram it goes to a from there from a it goes to b and again it comes back to o so this is one oscillation or the other way oscillation can happen is that if i started from the extreme position a it goes to b and it comes back to o so these are the two ways in which the pendulum can complete an oscillation basically it's like if you have a 50 meter race on a track and you run and the track is from point a to point b run from point a to point b or you run from point b to point a it's the same thing you cover the same distance so one oscillation the time taken for one oscillation by the pendulum is called the time period of the pendulum and this time period of the pendulum will always remain the same that is unless you change the length of the thread if you push a pendulum it will move slowly slowly the distance will go on decreasing until it stops so even till the last moment the time if you measure it will be the same because not only does the distance decrease the speed of the pendulum also decreases so both of them are proportionate let's go to the next slide now the time period but there are some factors affecting the time period so they are the length of the thread and the gravity of the area friction doesn't affect the time period but gradually slows down the pendulum like i said and it also reduces the distance covered so because of this the time period will remain the same mass of the bob doesn't affect the pendulum so if i tie a ball of 1 kg to the thread or if i tie a ball of 1 gram to the thread okay 1 gram is very little maybe 500 grams the time period will still remain the same so only the factors that affect are the length of the thread and the gravity Nowadays most clocks or watches have an electric circuit with one or more cells. These clocks are called the quartz clocks. The time measured by the quartz clocks is much more accurate than the clocks available earlier. Okay now to see the factors affecting the time period we will go to the pendulum. Welcome to the virtual science lab. The reason I've decided to do this experiment virtually is because I can change the gravity and the friction over here which I can't do in reality. So like I said the length of the thread affects the time period of the pendulum. What I'll do to prove this is that first I will put the length of the thread I'll set it to 0.4 meter like this and then after that I'll do 0.8 meter. So we'll see that how the length of the thread affects the time period of the pendulum. Now that I have set the length to 0.4 meter, we will do. We will take the time period for 10 oscillations and we will divide it by 10 because that will give a more accurate time period of the pendulum. So let's begin. Okay, everything is ready to go. I have a stopwatch. I have the length set to 0.4 meter and I have the pendulum rotated. Go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the time period taken for ten oscillations is thirteen seconds. So time period taken for one oscillation will be thirteen divided by ten, which is one point three seconds. 
So when the length of the thread was 0.4 meter, I got the time period as 1.3 seconds. Now I will change the length of the thread to 0.8 meter. That's it. And here I'll position it back. I'll reset everything. And again, I will move the pendulum. We'll see the time period again. And then we'll know how the length affects the time period. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now I'm getting the time period as 1.8 seconds because, okay, I'm getting about 19 seconds. So I'll take it as 1.9 seconds. So when the length of the thread is 0.8 meter, I'm getting the time period as 1.9 seconds and before it was 1.3 seconds. So this proves that the length of the thread affects the time period of the, of the pendulum. The more the length, the more time period. The less length, the less time period. Now let's look at how the gravity affects the time period of the pendulum. So here if we do the same activity with length of 0.8 meter on Jupiter, on Jupiter the gravity is more than the Earth. So there let's see how the time period will be affected. So I have increased the gravity. I have made the pendulum ready, stopwatch is ready and go. 1, 2, 3, 4 oscillations, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So on earth it took 1.8 seconds. The time period was 1.8 seconds on Jupiter where the gravity is more. The time period is 1.1 seconds. So this indicates that the more gravity the time period will reduce. The speed of the pendulum will increase. And the less gravity the more time period. Now that we are back, after looking at the factors affecting the time period of a pendulum, let's look at how to measure the distance, time and speed of an object. The units for measuring distance is kilometer, meter and centimeter. And for this we use a scale and inch tape. Also in cars, you have an odometer. You can see that over here, some number is written below the speedometer in a car. That will tell how much distance you have covered how many kilometers you have covered till date. Then we have the time. The units of time are hour, second and minute. We use clock and then in ancient times sundial we used to look at the shadow and find out what hour it is. The shadow of the sun. Then we have water clock and the sand clock. Sand clock over here the picture is given. Water clock is also like this only except that in place of sand water is used. Then we have the speed. Speed we use kilometer per hour or meter per second. The conversion has been given in one of the previous slides. For this, the speed, if you have the distance, if you have the time, why do you need anything to measure distance divided by time? But still in cars, we have the speedometer to see at what speed we are traveling.